Hello. We made a door. Hi, hello. I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you for watching. So today we have made this lovely sliding barn door to cover up the entrance to our bathroom. It was a fun project, super easy, very inexpensive. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, ringing that bell, very important these days. And let's go ahead and get on with the build. To start this build, you will need four one by three by eight foot long boards, one two by six by 10 foot board, one four by eight sheet of Luon or plywood that's a quarter of an inch thick, and one rail kit. You will also need some miscellaneous screws for the assembly. Size the kit for your opening. For us, our opening was 48 inches and required one main kit and one extension rail. Likewise, the length of the two by six will actually be dependent on the size of your opening as well. I will leave links in the descriptions below for all the parts we used for this build. Start the build by cutting the 1x3s to the appropriate size. For our opening, which was 92 inches tall by 48 inches wide, we cut the 1x2s to 92 inches tall and 45 inches wide. Since the frame is assembled with pocket hole screws, we did a quick tutorial on how to use my new Armor pocket hole jig. The jig is super easy to use, and the built-in clamping system makes perfect holes each time. We drilled pocket hole screws in the end of each of the horizontal rails for the door so that they can be attached to the vertical rails on the inside of the door. Assembling the frame is fairly straightforward. For best results, clamp the pieces together both lengthwise and top to bottom. This stops the pieces from moving when driving in the pocket hole screws. The clamps from top to bottom are perhaps the most important because the wood has a tendency to move when you screw in the pocket hole screws. If you don't have extra long clamps, you can string together two clamps to bridge the gap. Next, we trim the 4x8 sheet of Luon down to size using a track saw. If you don't have a track saw, this can easily be accomplished using a circular saw and any straight edge. Next, we sanded the edges of the Luon a little bit. It can get a little rough after cutting and splinter, so you definitely want these edges to be smooth for the final build. Next, we applied glue to the frame using a roller. If you don't have one of these Rockler glue rollers, I definitely recommend it. It is completely worth the money. It's only a few dollars and it is such a time saver. Next, we placed the frame on the Luon and then found a spare piece of MDF to place on top to make sure that the frame was flat against the Luon. Then we attached clamps all the way around the periphery. We didn't have any clamps to get to the center of the frame, so we found whatever random things we had laying around the garage to provide a little bit of weight to the center of the unit. Next, we sealed the Luon using sanding sealer. The goal here was to minimize the amount of paint we needed to apply. By using sanding sealer, you only need one primary coat and maybe another touch-up coat, rather than applying two or three primary coats. It certainly helps with the Luon, which is very porous. Once the sanding sealer was dry, we painted the door, but unfortunately, I didn't get any video of that. We added some vertical supports to each side of the door to block out more light from the bathroom, which worked out really great. I highly recommend this addition. We simply cut one by two scraps down to length and applied a little glue and clamped them for a few hours until the glue was dry. We first started the installation of the rail system by attaching the 2x6 to the wall, which I didn't get any video of. Then we moved on to drilling some pilot holes for the lag screws, which will attach the rail to the 2x6. It's really important at this stage that you make sure that the rail system is level. Otherwise, the door will not operate properly once it's assembled. Ask me how I know this. Once we had the pilot holes drilled, 
we simply attached the lag nuts using the impact driver and tightened everything down securely. The next step is to attach the rail hanger to the door, which we did off camera. Once the rail hangers are attached to the door, we placed the door on the rail and did a few tests. We adjusted the stops on each side to make sure the door closed and opened fully. The final step was to add a guide rail on the bottom of the door. The one as supplied with the kit was not going to work for us, so I quickly modeled a new one in Fusion, printed it, and installed it. It worked perfectly. At this point, oh, good. there was a little happy dance and the project was a success. All right, well, that was the build. I hope you enjoyed it. Not too complicated, not a whole lot of parts. We got a little bit of hardware across the top to run the door across the rail. We got the door itself and some handles. Pretty straightforward. All right, if you like this type of build, please consider subscribing, ringing that bell. Very important these days. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please do so. That's where I post a lot of pictures about projects like this so you can get an advanced sneak peek into future videos. All right, that's it. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but leave your comments down below and we can make future videos better. All right, any questions or comments, also leave them down below, I'd appreciate that. And once again, thanks for watching and don't forget to be inspired. Hardware, some wood from Magnum. You pick now to get up and start walking around. You've been asleep for four hours. All right, just lay down. Are you tired of being woken up in the middle of the night from a bright light in your face? Or tired of being woken up in the morning when your significant other wakes up before you and decides to take a shower and do her hair and blow dry and straighten. So was I. I have the solution for you. A sliding door.